In this video, we're going to be configuring alternate access mappings, AAMs, and also host name site collections. In SharePoint 2013, AAMs are being de emphasized. There's still a way to go if you need a particular wildcard inclusion path based site collection, or for most of the self service site creation scenarios you'll come across, including my sites and team sites. Host name site collections give us the ability to have a unique or multiple top level URLs for a single site collection, even more than the five you can have with AAMs. It also supports off box SSL termination. We'll start by creating an AAM. So this is under Application Management, and then Configure Alternative Access Mappings. The first thing we should do is select the appropriate Alternate Access Mapping Collection. It says Alternate Access Mapping Collection, but really it means Web Application. So I've got a choice of my three web apps here. I'm going to go with SharePoint Intranet Contoso Local. And I have a choice of up to five URLs. These are the public URLs. The name of each corresponds to the zone they're in. Now, if I put a URL in here such as HTTPS intranet, it's a common misconception that if I hit save, I will somehow get that zone and IIS will magically pick up this piece of information. So let's dispel both those myths. If I hit save, let's go to IIS manager. And if I drill into our intranet and select edit bindings, note that I do not have a new binding created for our supposed new zone or alternate access mapping. So to make it work at all, I would have to change this to either have an explicit binding or change it to accept all unassigned IP addresses. We could do that. However, that is probably the wrong way to go about it. Instead, we should consider creating a zone. So let's now see if we have a zone or not. If I go to application management, I can go to manage web applications and we can select the intranet. If I have a new zone, if I have that second zone, the intranet one, if I go up to authentication providers, we should see it. Note how it's not there, hence we do not have a zone. So let's just set things back the way they were. I'm going to remove this HTTPS intranet spurious URL. And a better way of creating your alternate access mapping and ensuring that we have a zone and zones are used for authentication reasons is we can go to manage web applications, select our web application, and then hit extend. And this has two effects. It will ask us what IIS site we'd like to create. So let's give it intranet as its host header, but let's use SSL, and that should be port 443. So now the idea is we should have intranet.contoso.local listening on SSL, so we have a HTTPS version of our intranet. Exactly the same content, however, served over a different mechanism. And then I get to pick the zone, intranet, internet, custom, or extranet. Now, what the zones mean is entirely up to us in terms of authentication and web config changes and things like that. But the creation of the new zone means necessarily I get a web config file, I get a new IIS site listening on this combination of host header, and I get a virtual directory, virtual root containing all of the ASP.NET files again for our web application. So I say OK. Now that's not creating me another web application, that's merely extending the existing one into a new zone. In the meantime, if I go over to IIS and I refresh our view, we'll see it's got a mystery named site in IIS. If I refresh this again, it eventually gets the correct name. If I go to edit bindings, we see that it's got HTTPS intranet contoso .local on port 443. Further, if I explore this, we can see that this will eventually get the ASP.NET content that we're waiting for. And you can see that now filling up with ASP.NET content. So Central Admin reckons that's completed. So if I go back to Application Management and refresh this page, and now I can select the intranet again. If I go up to Authentication Providers, I'm hoping this time we get to see two, the default and the intranet. The purpose is I could now specify that we have different forms of authentication. So maybe username, password in a SQL table, maybe Kerberos, maybe NTLM, maybe even basic over SSL would be acceptable for this channel. There we go. So of course we could also do that in PowerShell. However, it's probably worth doing something different in PowerShell. 
Something you can only do in PowerShell is create host named site collections. Now to do this properly, you probably want a separate web application where we are allowing all unassigned IP addresses and any matching host headers. So I'm going to eschew that step. We'll assume we've got that on, let's say, intranetcontoso.local. And here I can just create new site collections, tell it which web application it's for, and then specify a new, if you like, host header, a new URL that can be used to access this site collection and no other site collection. So let's use PowerShell for this, and I can use new SP site to create our site collection. And I'm going to create this one with a URL of my host headed site, or whatever I want to call it. And I give it a host headed web application parameter of our actual web app. So that's going to be intranet.contoso.local. Then I need to give it a name. Let's put this in quotes, put some spaces there. My host headed site collection. And then a template, STS hash zero again. And then the owner, alias of contoso slash sp admin. So of course, my host headed site won't actually render, won't actually resolve to anything. So let's copy that, probably just that. And then I should really head over to my DNS server. So let's try that now. Whilst we're waiting for this to complete, if I head over to my domain controller, let's go tools, DNS. And under Contoso local, I'm going to create a new host name my host headed site and the IP address will be 10.0.0.3 so let's go back to my SharePoint server that's still waiting that's now completed so let's try this out HTTP colon slash ash my host headed site the anticipation oh and it's ready for us to log in so let's try that So there you can see that's created my host headed site collection. If I go back to PowerShell, there are a few other commandlets worth knowing. If I want to add a new URL, I've got set SP site URL. Just going to hit cancel. Then I've obviously also got get SP site URL. And lastly, I have remove dash SP site URL. And with those, we can manage the URLs that we give to host headed site collections. So we've seen in this video the two different ways of creating multiple site collections, one using alternate access mappings, the other using host-headed site collections. Here ends the video.